it's just this pseudo enlightened way of speaking of just saying this is what I like this is what I want Sophia Esperanza Esperanza is no longer vegan she buys used leather and she eats eggs and that's really it for an hour-long video, that's basically it. So if you've seen her video, and if you're familiar with me, then you might be surprised to hear that I agree with her sometimes. I don't agree with the vibe of the video. It's as if I've had a rock-hard safe wrapped around an organ, preventing it from performing a vital function, unnecessary weighted structure, restricting what so desperately just wants to flow. That's how it feels for me not to speak my heart. Nor do I agree with some of her reasoning or really lack of reasoning. Veganism as I know it, as many people know it, places animals at the epicenter of an ideology. And I resonate more deeply with a philosophy that creates a synergistic, symbiotic relationship to mind, body, soul, earth, animals, other humans basically just putting everything at the center. What does that even mean? But for the most part, when she talks more directly, instead of all the woo alignment truth kind of stuff, I do agree with her. When she talks about buying used leather is a good example. I think she gives sound reasoning for that. Often in the way I source these items, I could find them for pennies on the dollar. So these vintage items being the only option that actually created no new waste, chemical load had dwindled from age, I could guarantee no human was currently exploited to make it. The animals used for the jacket had long been passed. No fish were going to wash up to the surface of waterways from dyes being released from factories with no regulation. It had been through generations of where humans had been around since the 70s and was collecting dust in a warehouse. These are just some of the comparisons that made me realize this option could actually be a loving expression towards animals. She's over the top when she talks about forever chemicals, PFAs, new vegan boots that were hotboxing their feet with toxins. We don't know if they actually can enter our blood, right? I think they found it in sweat and oil on our skin, but we don't know if it passes through the skin. But buying used makes sense, even if it's leather boots, right? Spending pennies on the dollar, as she says, for some leather boots instead of buying pleather fast fashion boots or even expensive sustainable vegan boots makes sense. Obviously, you can buy used pleather stuff and even expensive vegan clothing for less money. I don't think she needs those leather boots. It's not like these are work boots. But yeah, I really don't see an issue with buying used animal product clothing. I don't do it because uh, it makes me sad, honestly, the thought of like wearing cow skin. Like if I had to choose between new shoes and used leather shoes, I'd buy the new ones, even though that's definitely less sustainable, more impact. I don't believe that using animal products automatically correlates to animal exploitation and the commodity status of animals. Absolutely. Freeganism is a good example. She gives the example of picking up a, a bird feather off the ground. We can pluck a feather from a bird against her will. Is that the same as utilizing a feather that we found on the ground to create a beautiful piece of art with? I've talked about backyard hens a lot on this channel. I really have no issue with eating unfertilized eggs from chickens. I think a line is crossed as soon as you bring money or even bartering into the equation. As soon as you purchase eggs from even a backyard hen operation, those hens are now a commodity. As soon as you commodify a sentient being, the risk is there for that being to be seen as an it and treated as an it. Animal activist believes in an ethical egg a humane honey, a moral milk, a considerate cheese. There are your headlines. <laughs> I do too, but that doesn't mean it's actually happening. Eggs are easy. Again, backyard hens, cows, pretty hard to have a backyard cow for most of us. I actually have a video on ethical milk. Is it possible to purchase milk ethically? And yeah, it seems like it would be quite expensive. I think it was like 20 something dollars a gallon. We can't feed the world this way, as she admits. They may not be our everyday foods and that's what makes it so special. It's something that we have to really work towards in order to be able to benefit from. Truly trying to treat these beings as beings and care for them first and foremost while also commodifying them. It means we can't make as many animal products and it means they will be very expensive. If a system of stewarding animals mimics that of an animal sanctuary. And the only factor that we change 
is that some of those vegetarian elements are shared is that so wrong shared or traded again to me there is an inherent difference there once you bring money into the situation you, there's an inherent risk to their well-being money makes people do stupid things there is that temptation to cut corners and cutting corners when we're talking about sentient beings means not caring for them as well but certainly what she's advocating for is by far better for the animals by far better for the planet right because again it would mean that we're all pretty much eating vegan <laughs> i had my first egg not too long ago from a farm here in austin that openly and proudly shared their ethics towards her flock of about 80 hens. I was really thrilled to see where she buys her eggs from. So often it's, oh, I make sure I purchase ethical eggs. That's it. Please don't research that. I looked into the farm. It's an urban farm in Austin, Texas. They say the chickens live out their lives even after they stop producing eggs. They use the manure as fertilizer for their crops. So that's kind of good insurance to make sure that they don't just get rid of the chickens, right? Because they are still using them. They also don't till and they go into kind of the arduous process of becoming no-till and finally settling on these tarp covers as a way to control weeds. It's pretty awesome. I'm sure very expensive. I'm sure whatever fruit and vegetables they sell are very expensive. So as far as purchasing eggs goes, I mean, this is this is pretty great. It's, it's still risky and it's too much of a risk for me, for some, you know, product I don't need and I don't want, to be honest. But I can understand someone like Sophia being okay with that risk. I mean, I doubt she acknowledges that there's any risk, right? Every, every, it's just beautiful. It's all uh cycle and we're all one together with the planet mother earth but i can understand someone being okay with buying these eggs the rest of the video when you've built such a strong relationship with animals in the ways that i do the idea of sharing a small bit of their creations does not seem wrong at all i personally believe that you have to obtain some kind of unspoken spoken permission and if you've never felt what that is then you've never felt what that is she doesn't like the idea of eating chicken eggs so she's convinced herself that the chickens gave her the okay that's what that sounds like to me <laughs> what else can you say so veganism in my opinion predominantly places significance on animals and We've just reached this point on earth where if we're going to address the amount of suffering that is happening to all creation, all life, we can't isolate where we place healing. It has to be everyone, everything, all together as one. Sounds nice. So much of what she says sounds nice, but what does it actually mean? What, what would this sort of activism even look like? Every advocacy group, every charity promoting every cause all the time? Sounds effective. Single issue activism is a thing because typically it is more effective. You're going to have a harder time trying to get people to agree on lots of different issues. A vegan group that also calls for trans rights, trans advocacy, well, you're going to alienate the people who may have been interested in the vegan part, but not the trans part. Or the opposite of that, we have a transgender advocacy group that also calls for veganism. Well, you're gonna alienate a lot of the people who are interested in the trans part and not the vegan part. I would love for all of us to seriously consider Earth as a living, breathing, sentient being because she is. No, she is not because she is not a she. It's a planet. What? <laughs> More importantly, if we agree with her that the planet is a she, what does that mean? What, what do we change? How do we align our lifestyles with the Earth is a she? Like, it seems like you just kind of say it and then that's it, right? You just say that you feel the oneness and call Earth she, and that's it. You've achieved enlightenment. If she's talking about sustainability, pollution, like she talked about with, you know, leather and buying these like fast fashion pleather stuff, well, who's she talking to exactly? Because vegans, for the most part, all already know all of that and agree with all of that. We try to walk instead of bike. We try to buy used and recycle and avoid single use plastic, etc. We need more Earth stewards, people who are capable of filling the cracks with themselves. Not more people necessarily declaring what they're not going to do, but what they are stepping into. And what is that? Please give me something. <laughs> what are they stepping into? Like, what does she want that is so different from what vegans already want? Eggs and used leather 
and buy organic and don't eat mock meats? Like, is that it from an hour and three minutes? Is that is that it? <laughs> we need to go back to school, Earth, and listen. We've been moving so fast, warp speed for so long thinking that technology was going to be the thing that saved us. She really doesn't like industrialized agriculture, whether that's farming animals or plants, and there's good reason not to, it's pretty destructive. But the going back to school thing, so not industrial agriculture, does she want to cull the population? I'm not joking, I am serious. When you call for a return to simpler times, that is what you're calling for. Industrial agriculture is destructive, but it allows us to feed 8 billion people. We cannot feed everyone with, no offense, dinky little farms like the one she buys her eggs from. If she really wants this, then she has to be okay with significantly less people. Otherwise, we have to find a way to do both. We have to find a way to feed lots of people and also have minimal impact on the planet. Veganism is a huge step forward, but she's right, it's not enough and she wouldn't want to hear it, but we need technology. We need technological advancements in food production, like genetic modification. I'm sure she's not a fan. Uh, drones, there are cool farm drones that can actually target spray pesticides so that you use less pesticide. This is the kind of stuff we need to reduce the need for pesticides and tilling, etc. It's not an easy, nice sounding answer, like listen to mother nature or whatever, but most problems don't have easy, nice answers. I think my favorite part in the whole video is when she tries to make processed food, like pr production of vegan meats, sound as bad as slaughtering animals. If we had to eat our every meal while watching how it was created, from start to finish, all the ingredients, how would we feel? Would we be able to watch a factory farm chicken hanging from her feet in shackles as she takes her last breath as we bite into her wings? Or would we be able to finish our plant-based burger, our mock meats as we watch them being churned in these huge metal mechanisms like a giant slurry having dead looking ingredients being dumped in, churning some more to be portioned up, heading up a plastic conveyor belt like a roller coaster ride. Dead looking ingredients. <laughs> she does mention raw foods a few times, saying that sometimes she eats raw. She even mentions raw milk. Very cool. But yeah, there's no comparison between killing an animal that doesn't want to die and food traveling down a conveyor belt. <laughs> I'm not even sure what the issue is there, just that it's there's processing involved. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the automation, there's nothing inherently wrong with automated food production. Again, it's one of the things that has helped us feed so many people. We've just got to find a way for it to work for both us and the planet. This fast emerging sphere of what we call mock meat, mock cheese, mock dairy, vegan foods, and so on, it's extremely saturated with products that are, in my opinion, going to cause a slew of health issues for the world a continuation of disconnection between us and Earth, what is natural. A lot of these vegan products are extremely inflammatory for the body, loaded with sugar, gums, emulsifiers, artificial flavors, artificial colorings, additives, preservatives, that are dosing the body with, again, in my opinion, trauma. How? And also she's equating a lot of things here. Like sugary yogurt is not the same as a pea protein and oil protein based meat or just egg. Again, plant protein and oil. Oh, I think it's canola oil though, isn't it? Oh no, it's so toxic. She doesn't talk like that. That was just, <laughs> this is just how I chose to say it. Speaking to vegan processed foods, I started to eat many of them about four to five years ago. And that was a point in my life where my health started to plummet. And it was only when I reintroduced eating mostly whole food, plant-based, that I found relief processed vegan foods caused skin discoloration. <laughs> Maybe she got some sun so it's more apparent. That's what happens with partner. He's got lots of it on his hands and man, when he gets tan, you can really see it. There's a lot more in this hour long video and it is hard not to laugh at most of it. Like many of the My Journey YouTubers, I'll call them, the woo ones, the alignment ones, I'll talk more about alignment in a minute. Like many of these influencers, Sophia seems pretty self focused, nicest way I can say that. They preach oneness and we're all in this together, but watching videos like this, I just get such a sense of self-centeredness, self-absorption. Seriously though, why is she molesting that tree? To be fair, she is a strikingly beautiful 
woman while I was watching it. I was like, man, like she could model. And sure enough, she does, or she used to. I actually decided to walk into a fast fashion career over a high fashion modeling career because it pretty much guaranteed that I wouldn't interact with animal textiles. If I looked like that, I don't know, man. My videos might be exactly this, except only this. <laughs> Just me spinning around in my dress and my hat. <laughs> and people would watch. And how she talks much of the time, it's it's her. It's all about what she feels and feeling her truth and feeling aligned. Even not eating animals, it's all about her connection to animals and how she feels about animals. And throughout this process of life, I've had this overflowing of love for animals, like a cup that became so full, it began pouring out from every side and it started to permeate into other areas of my life too, filling those cups just as high to the brim. Through animals, I learned to love myself, all other life, and remembered that earth is a living, breathing being as well. Rather than what makes sense morally, what is rationally good for people, animals, the planet, so alignment, she talks a lot about alignment. I found that where my soul feels most content to dance within is a spectrum of, I guess what you could call ethical vegetarianism all the way to raw foodist. And I say dance because I'm not gonna pin myself down anymore. This feels so aligned for me. Alignment is just feeling. It's just how she feels. And feeling leads to whatever you want. She feels aligned to eat eggs. She wants to eat eggs. That's what she's saying. It's just this pseudo enlightened way of speaking, of just saying, this is what I like. This is what I want. If someone says, I feel aligned to factory farming, who are you to disagree with that? Even though she spends several minutes early in the video talking about factory farming, she's actually been in these facilities and talking pretty extensively about the horrors of factory farming. What can she say to this? I mean, maybe she's fine with it. That's their truth. It's very frustrating to me and probably many of you watching this because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have anything to do with a cohesive ethical framework. It's not why we're vegan. I'm vegan because animals are sentient. I don't buy meat because these animals suffer greatly their entire lives. And even if they don't, they ultimately are killed and they don't want to die. It's inherently immoral. I don't buy eggs because chickens also suffer and die. There are very few farms like Boggy Creek farms that actually let their animals die naturally. And again, they're still making money off of these animals. Even if the risk is small, it's too big of a risk for me, particularly for a product that's not even beneficial. Like I don't need more saturated fat and cholesterol. I don't buy honey because I never liked honey, honestly, and bees might be sentient. I don't eat oysters or clams or worms or lobsters because they're disgusting and that's it. I think the likelihood of sentience for any of these is basically nil and really have no moral issues with people eating them. Those are my reasons for being vegan, and it has nothing to do with what I feel aligned towards, <laughs> other than having aversions to most animal products, but most of that came from being vegan and not eating these foods for well over a decade. I don't have this connection to animals that Sophia claims she has. I really have no desire to be around animals, just like I have no desire to be around most people. <laughs> Crucially, it doesn't matter, because my veganism, my consequentialism, has nothing to do with my feelings or my personality. Thank God, because my feelings would lead me to <laughs> eat whatever I want, play video games, never go outside again. I don't agree with her everything at the center worldview, not because I don't feel aligned to it, but because it doesn't make sense. Rocks and plants are not as valuable as people and non-human animals for very obvious reasons. Rocks are not sentient. They have no inherent value. The only value that non-sentient things have is the value they present to sentient beings. Rocks are very important for the health of the planet, which is very important for our own health. Promoting this your truth view of the world only speaks to those who already agree. Only the people who feel whatever cause is true will support it. Is that really what we want? People to choose their values based on their feelings, their intuition? Don't we have enough of that? Don't we have enough like anti-gay people who just like, they think it's gross? I guess that's their truth. Point is, we need reason, we need evidence to move forward as a society, to do better, to reduce suffering. Fuck alignment.
Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to know your thoughts. Of course, like the video if you did. Subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. And thank you so much to my patrons for supporting the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I post two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patron. I do a sort of vlog thing that I'm going to be posting very soon on there. And then the second half of the month, I do a controversial topic, something unrelated to veganism. Thanks again, guys. New video soon. This is so hardcore. I can't even, I would cry a million tears and then die, I think. I don't think I could live with that amount of trauma. My six-year-old, on the other hand, loves bugs. They love taking photos of bugs. They freak out whenever there's a bug, especially when they haven't gotten a photo of yet. Uh, I just ordered them a uh, backpack and water bottle for school. The theme? Bugs.